Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, you're welcome to the uh, lecture in which we will see how to uh, program or create the uh, mating pool, that is selection of the survival of fittest, fittest individuals, and then uh, that program in MATLAB, okay? So uh, seeing how to make that program in MATLAB. So let us see that here, if you see, I'm trying to uh, explain you a function which is named string substring. Okay, we have already seen these two functions, how to generate population and how to decode an individual given the, the uh, string of zeros and ones. So now we'll see that how this program sing, uh, string substring works. What it does basically is takes a full chromosome, okay, full chromosome, and a separation array that is the which variable contains uh, which variable takes how much of the slice of that full chromosome is described in the array we'll see how this is described and then the lower and upper bounds of those so similar to, uh, lower and upper bounds of the each of the variables okay so first we'll see that how this um, variables are there and uh, then i'll explain the further so, uh, so basically it takes this full string and then uh, that full string it separates and then that chromosome is then written in form of a individual okay so basically it is uh, it, this program will write uh, take a chromosome in it uh, as an input and then give out the whole individual as a uh, substring as an output okay uh, So, so let's uh, go and see that how it is doing. Um, so basically, if you see what what it takes here is it takes full string uh, separation array x max and x min, and we'll just see how we define that. So this is a GA main program. So now instead of writing on a command we do, I'll write everything on in a file. Okay. So here, if you see, this is number of variables. We, this two are just to clear the screen and clear all the things in the memory space. And then we define number of variables of the problem. Then each variable take how many, how many bits. So there are two variables. So you have to give two such length, two lengths that is 10 and 10. So one variable number one takes 10 and variable number two takes 10 bits. Similarly, variable maxes and variable bins are there. So first variable is from 6 to 0, upper bound uh, and lower bound. And the second variable is again 6 to 0, upper bound and lower bound. And let's take the population size is 5. Okay. Now if you see here, I am generating that string. Okay. What it is doing basically is it is summing up all the number of uh, bits here okay summing up sum is a function in this so it just sums up all the variable bits and create a ch chromosome string length and for that chromosome string length it takes uh, generates initial population okay so pop string is what we have already seen and it runs that program and makes uh, populations uh, population of individuals from depending on number of population size you give that is done here then next uh, uh, here we will see that what it is doing next one is uh, so okay the idea yes was uh, to show you that this is how this variables are designed so this is the separation array here okay <clears throat> this is the separation array that is how um, what are the variable strings how the, the chromosome would be separated okay and this is maximum and minimum of that so let's go back to that program and see what it is doing so it is taking full string this value separation array how many which uh, variable take how many bits and then it uh, creates the starting point and ending point okay so this uh, logic if you see it starts from uh, one so first is always starts from one and it takes the starting matrix or a starting point okay so starting point is separation point it is starting from two so first to the next separation array that is how much it is 
okay so <clears throat> separation array plus the starting at this one so it is starting from one so if you see this is added to give you the starting one and similarly you can find that once you get the starting one you have the separation array okay the variable length so you can always find out the end mat okay end matrix so this is basically uh, starting matrix and end matrix are set of matrices which gives you the idea what is the starting point and what is the end point of the slices in the chromosome once that is defined decided and what it is doing is it is running on the length of the separation array okay so depending on the total length total length of the separation array it is taking <clears throat> okay uh, and then uh, the number of that means that means number of variables there are and then it is trying to calculate the value how it is calculating the value is it is taking from the full uh, string that is full chromosome it is uh, dividing it is taking that slice particular slice st mat to end mat okay for that particular uh, individual okay for the particular sorry variable okay ith variable it is taking end mat and it is calculating the number of bits so depending on what is the length of this s value how much is the length of this s value binary string it will give you the number of bits and then integer value is first calculated using decode value uh, decode individual which we have already seen here okay you give the string here and it will kind of give you the integer value and that integer value is taken and then you try to write the uh, substring for that okay so depending on if it is the same formula if you remember so that formula we are using here to get the uh, this one okay so this program is run for each chromosome one by one okay so this is called one by one for each of the chromosome for full population length and that is how it runs so let us see in ga main where it is called so here once it is done this are initialized all parameters are initialized then you have generated the population over here once the population is generated then what i do here is i find out variable values okay so this are this is basically equivalent to running for all the population size giving you the values one by one and uh, getting all the uh, chromosome into individual form, uh, individual form okay so this is basically passing on the individual the full string okay this is the chromosome string full string you are giving and the variable string length and variable max and min and that will give you the uh, variable values okay so again <coughs> uh, uh, then it calculate the objective function value this we have already seen how to calculate the objective function value just put in the variable values and it will give you the objective function value so uh, it is populating the objective function value into the uh, what you call a array and then fitness value from that objective value it is calculating the fitness value and then it is running it uh, so this is the objective value so it is basically a array and this is also a array so when you run this program i'll just pause it here you can see the variable values and objective function values and fitness values and if you want to see the population individuals also then i think putting they are of same length so i can put population individuals also here itself and now the first one it will be So the above one is this display function only displays whatever you write and beneath that this values would come it is possible to write in matlab it will just uh, if the mat matrices are of equal length it will just put side by side so hopefully it is it is going to work and we can see the population individual uh, okay selected population one two 
Oh, I want to see population individual, okay? Population individuals. So basically, it will to be put together. Put together the strings and show the variable values. And then it will also give you the fitness function altogether. So in a nice, uh, possibly in a nice uh, way. So let us try to run and see. There's some mistake over here. Population individual, I think there is some spelling mistake. I'll just make it okay. Population individuals. So there's no chance of spelling mistake. Okay, now hopefully it will run now. It has run. So if you see these are the, I think string lengths are quite large. It's up to 20 and then you are seeing this is five population, one, two, three, four, five. So up to 16 column, it is showing all the ones and zeros from 17 to 20 again, because 10 and 10, this is the, then these two are basically the variable values. They are from zero to six, both of them. And this is the objective function values, five values, and this is the fitness value. Okay, all put together. So this is up to this point that when you uh, run up to this point, that means you have calculated the fitness value and for the population individuals. Now, <clears throat> we'll see, I'll remove this one now. And we'll see how uh, we are going to now do this selection, okay, here. So if you see that what I'm doing is fitness is calculated for all of the population. So I calculate the selection probability of each of one of them. So it is possible to do it here. You can divide uh, two arrays like this, okay? So this fitness value is full array and some fitness is a single number. So it gets divided, full array is get divided by sum of fitness values, okay? We have just calculated fitness value just above. So that is selection probability and then I calculate the cumulative sum. So there is a function called come sum and you give the, uh, you give a matrix to it selection probability map matrix to it and give you the cumulative sum okay once you have the cumulative sum you can see what is the uh, selection probability and p fit that is the cumulative sum of that and we, the, here it is passed so i can again this can be displayed and we can see up to this point so i can run further so if you see, this is the selection probability of each of the individual. You can see for this is that is highest. And this is the cumulative sum which comes up. <clears throat> so this is uh, cumulative sum is very straightforwardly calculated in MATLAB. You have a function for that. So if you have a matrix, you can, if you have an array, you can calculate the cumulative sum. After calculating the cumulative sum, then the Next part is to do the roulette wheel selection, okay? So what I am doing here is in this one, I am giving the cumulative sum to this function called select individual, okay? So it is just giving the selection parameters and it will be taking this cumulative sum only and generate that which are the individuals which are taken to be the, kept taken into the mating pool, okay? So it doesn't take the mating pool in itself. It takes the cumulative value and generate those indices or the individual numbers which are to be taken and their probabilities. This is just taken for seeing what it is. And uh, then this, uh, once you get these indices, you have an option of putting pot population interval and select those indices, okay? So if you do give it this population individual individuals, uh, is a matrix of population and you just give the uh, 
indices to it selection indices to it it will select those populations over here and make a mating pool so it is slightly written in a different way okay so let us see this how this select individual is written okay select individual function what it does so it takes the cumulative sums over here okay and uh, with that cumulative sums what it does basically is from that number of p fit is actually a length of that p fit is equal to the population size so for whole of the population it does uh, take the indices okay one and calculates a random number and if that random number okay uh, if that <coughs> random number is between that uh, probability number is a so this uh, random number is basically taken as this and then for whole of this length it runs and sees where it actually belongs to in which part okay so this is what it does exactly so depending on where it falls it will give you the value over here that is that j plus one okay so this is how this one is selection of individual is done and it gives you basically all the all the indices are collected okay so it collects the indices indices number and that is how it is put so uh, it is greater than type of this one and uh, if it is greater than equal to that it stops and uh, it takes j plus one so it is greater than a number so as soon as you get that number it goes into that and and then it later on it becomes less okay so uh, if you if that particular random number is greater it goes on to it and if it is less than that it doesn't it comes out out, out of this loop so it doesn't go if it is not greater than that so that is how you select j plus one so we'll just run this and see how it works so here we have we'll see here we have a mating pool okay uh, which are selected and we'll see that uh, how the mating pool is so i'll just uh, uh, compare the mating pool with the mating pool with the actual uh, this one so i'll run this and in the end if you i think okay so this is i think the mating pool here so if you see uh, here in this mating pool i think one is only one individual is there okay because if you if you see one of the individual has very high probability okay you see the selection probability and cumulative probability if you see everything would most of the things will come between these two and that is how always one individual is coming over here i think maybe if i run once again with a different number then it may possibly have different set of individuals maybe more than one selected so let us see i'll just run but it's going according to the way we want it <clears throat> so okay go here and run once more Yes, it is again coming out to be came out to be same again. Check what is the problem. Actually, one is getting very high. 
mean that is what is happening so if i take more number of population possibly then it will be more useful so i'll just take more population rather than running again and again instead of 5 i'll just take 50 and then run it so if you see now this is the mating pool you have and uh, yes if you see this is here uh, one and third one is exactly repeated because possibly they may be same and that is what is happening and uh, there are repetitions for this okay one and three and again i think this one so there would be repetition so that is how it is uh, you form a mating pool here can always write programs in different ways okay so it's not that you exactly copy it down but you should exactly know how it is written and how the functions are so i think we'll stop here thank you